in a lot of UK here because we also went through that path believing that sovereign was part of the remedy. I regret to say that the system that we know as common law really was nothing more than a system of lawful slavery, albeit massively better than the system that was institu introduced in 1933 for the new Reich, the new age, not just in Germany, but especially and particularly in America. The Third Reich was founded as much in America by the laws of Roosevelt as it was with the uh, concordant created by the Vatican and the German Reich, the Nazi, the political arm of the elite of the Ashkenazi. But common law in 1540 was really nothing more than a system of lawful slavery, voluntary servitude. And the word common law means that. The word common coming from the 14th century creation of communists, where we get communism, by the way, to entrust, commit to a burden, public duty or service, obligation. In other words, from com, comito, to entrust, commit and menace, burden, public duty, service or obligation. There it is. The word tells us what it is, hidden in plain sight. And like I say, there was a lot of good in common law. We had habeas corpus. We had the great writs. We had rights that were inalienable. We had rights of way. We had forms of court. We had equity. We had a whole range of, of things that really limited the masters and the landlords and the owners of property from coming in and arbitrarily taking our rights from us. But... The criminally insane, the mentally ill, could not help themselves. They were not happy with a system where we had any right to object. And this was not the ancient Satanists that founded the Talmud, nor was this even the ancient founders of the Venetians. This was a new crew an angry crew, a crew that had served those that had served the lords and masters of the world for, for hundreds and thousands of years. As the Menes pirates had served the Ixos, so the Black Khazars had served the Menes. The land pirates had served the water pirates, the swamp pirates. And they were angry, these from the Mongolian and the Caucasus and the Khazar mountains, who have never been Semitic, ever been Semitic. They wanted their precious. Their God is gold. They wanted control. And they were sick of having to stay in ghettos while the elite of the Menes lived in palaces. They were sick of the training of mental illness. They wanted to run their precious, to live as they believe themselves to be the gods of us. And the prophecies of the Talmud in terms of none shall return to the promised land, the sacrifice of the six, which they interpreted as the six million, to them they were merely technical elements towards their ultimate goal of destroying the Talmud of cursing dark and cursing light because they don't worship either. They don't worship anything spiritual. They just worship God. Gold, I should say. Gold as their God. So to them, it was a matter of creating what they call the New Reich, the New World Order. And that's what they did. Uniform Commercial Code. World War II. The murder by fire of millions and the removal of the key components of common law. And that's what we've been living under. That's what we live under today. Well, that is not a system of law. And that is not a system of lawful slavery. It is a system of unlawful slavery, and by their own laws of the Hague, they are exposed. 
when they wrote all their laws in the 19th century with the Jesuits by their side. They wrote that unlawful slavery was banned and that the slave trade was banned, but they deliberately removed the element of lawful slavery. And so common law continued as lawful slavery. But since 1933, we have been living under a system of unlawful slavery. Now, how do we prove that it is no longer lawful slavery, but unlawful slavery? Well, we prove that before we go to The Hague, which is, by the way, their court, and we prove by their own laws, by not responding and not curing on the ecclesiastical deed polls, we indeed live in this world, seven billion of us live in this world of unlawful slavery. And if they don't strike their own system down, then even at the Hague, their laws mean nothing. And that's what we're doing. By their own iniquity, they shall be exposed. And when enough people know that these people do not believe or follow a single law, and we are the law, and what they say are lies, then we will be freeing the world of the parasite and those cowards that follow them. So that is the purpose of the deed poll. It is not to get magic remedy on one go. It's not to get magic remedy on a second go. It is to show with honour your divine rights, to stand up and put a claim of right, to stand up and say, I nor my children nor my ancestors will be known anymore as slaves. And your time has come. So I'm sorry for the frustration. I know it's difficult. But there is an end to this. And it's about doing things properly and in honour. And that's why I ask you, please, as I said at the beginning, to please be conscious of the honour and respect by which you do things and not to trivialise these tools. Because when you send a deed poll, you're not just sending it, you're sending it on behalf of the divine on behalf of all men and women on this planet. It is a big responsibility. So that's the first update in the covenant. Uh, I'm going to move to the second one. Article 36, gold, precious metals and gems. Now last week, I went through an article on one-evil.org about the curse of gold. And I know that this is a difficult subject because for the last 20 years, the parasite the pirate, has spent a long time convincing many in the truth movement that gold is good and the concept of lawful money, which is the use of gold, precious metal, which is a privately owned asset through a privately controlled central bank, somehow is beneficial to us when the bankers promise these are the same people that took our homes, took our children, and uh, treat us as slaves, promise on their oath that they will be good now. I assure you, if you want to know the value of a banker's oath, realise that there has never been, never been a product that can be created from a banker's oath. In other words, you cannot monetize a banker's oath. Why? Because it is worthless, it has no value. The only oath that they can monetize are our oaths. So when a parasite makes you a promise, realize that that oath means nothing. Never has. Never. So Article 36, gold, precious metals and gems. Now again, I'm not going to read out word for word here because some of this has been covered in our previous chat, but I am going to read some of the bottom of this, which is extremely important. So I'm going to read from 36.4. Actually, no, I'm going to read from 36.5. It is an indisputable fact 
that gold remains the father god of the parasite, the descendants of the swamp pirates known as the Menes of the Nile and the land pirates known as Gazars. Their obsession, devotion and duty to their primary god and lesser gods in the form of other precious metals and gems have seen them fanatically control as many sources and to continue to use their stockpiles to corrupt, to entrap and to ruin empires over the centuries. As gold is the primary god of these pirates and parasites, they stand in open defiance of all spiritual forces, both traditionally light and dark, who have now united under this new covenant. As a mark of this most sacred covenant, it is time to slay this false idol, this false god, and all the false gods of this pantheon. Now, what do you think the parasites used to do in the world when they came to an indigenous culture, particularly one that was strong, united? What did they do? That's right, they slayed their god. They destroyed their God. And when they slayed their God and destroyed their God, what happened to the culture? What happened to, the, to that particular group? That's right. They were rendered inert. Their, their heart was cut out. They were neutralized. You slay the God of the parasite, you neutralize their danger once and for all. You cannot reason with madness. You cannot reason with insanity. These people will never give up their precious. And they even give us public notice that they will never give up their precious. The golem in Lord of the Rings, the precious, will never be given up, even diving into a volcano to hold their precious. Holding their precious is more important to them than life itself. And that is what it shows you. Thirty-six point six. Just as when salt loses its taste, it is worthless, so it is hereby commanded by the full authority and power of the divine Creator and all angels, demons, saints, and spirits you know in heaven, that all forms of precious and rare metals, including but not limited to gold, silver, platinum, and palladium, and all precious and rare gems, are forbidden. I'm sorry, there's a typo there. Forbidden to be used as a direct medium of money. Nor may these rare metals and gems be used as a store of value or any form of underwriting of currency or negotiable instruments of any kind. Therefore, let it be known throughout heaven and across the earth that the great stockpiles of gold and the precious metals of the pirates and parasites, their great stores of precious gems are hereby rendered worthless and may never again be used to corrupt the currencies and systems of money of the world because we will use our energy we will use our integrity we will use the very words that Obama promises it believes nothing of we'll use our innovation to underwrite our currency and our education to underwrite our currency not the assets the precious of the parasites and the pirates As we say in 36.7, where a currency or money system defies heaven and seeks to use gold or precious metals or gems as a source of underwriting or store of value, such currencies are hereby rendered worthless and without lawful form. Now, if the Fed Reserve wants to go ahead and they've deferred it to date, want to go ahead and still produce the new gold-backed $100 notes, backed by the gold of the parasites, go ahead. But that currency will one day be rendered worthless. If the parasites decide to collapse one form of the euro and start another one, fine. But whatever they start will one day be rendered. And as night follows day, the word will get out that for the first time in history, It is a profession of faith. If you believe in the divine, then you believe that the divine has struck down the very thing that these people worship the most, their false god. The golden calf is dead. It has been destroyed forever. 
now at this time. 